The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. And he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here, stop. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, well, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and he will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue on our Lenten journey, and we've got our different things packed here. You've seen that we've packed the phone charger and the trail mix. We've got our shelter. We've got our day pack. What else do you bring when you're going on a trip? Probably one of the first things you would pack would be your toiletries, right? Your toothbrush and toothpaste. And uh, usually we bring or have a way to get some of those sample sized, uh, travel sized toiletries. The th oh, and of course, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Never forget your towel. So the thing about these is that we use them when um, something is no longer clean, right? I brush my teeth after I've eaten. When my teeth are no longer clean, then I need to use these. And so similarly, we take a shower, not when we're at our cleanest, but when we most need to be made clean. So we have these. And today we heard the story of Jesus cleansing the temple. Such an interesting word, isn't it? He sort of was taking apart the economy of the temple more than cleansing it. Um, I mean, spilling the coins was not really cleaning, was it? but he was cleansing the temple of the intentions that people were bringing to it, right? The money changers were there because you couldn't bring a, co a coin in with Caesar's picture on it. So you had to change it in for coins that didn't have that. But then the money changers were there to help you, but also they charged you a little bit extra when you were doing that so that you wouldn't bring an idol into the temple. And so, these practices grew up to help people worship God, but they also grew up so that people could, I don't know, line their own pockets. Maybe it was a legit industry, but Jesus looked at it and said, this is getting out of hand. This is no longer a place where people step in and they're thinking about God. They step in and they're thinking about all the, the minutia, all the things that uh, make make less clear what they're doing. And so Jesus cleansed the temple. That he took all the minutia away. Maybe he was taking the plaque away that had built up over time so that people could get back to what was really going to be life-giving in the short run and the long run. But I think it's so interesting that Jesus did that by making a whip of cords. And he used that to scatter the animals and probably 
to make it less likely that other people would approach him while he was doing this important thing. So we have this image of Jesus being really angry, maybe? I don't know. Uh, certainly aggressive. Uh, with the whip of cords. But we also know that in short order, Jesus will take the towel and he will kneel down and he will wash his disciples' feet, making them clean too. And so Jesus approaches our world in all the different ways we need him to, sometimes shaking things up, pouring them out, um, threatening the systems that would keep us from seeing God and from worshiping God. But God, Jesus also comes to us in a servanthood, in a tenderness, in a kindness that says, you had a long day. This journey is long. Let me wash your feet so that you can sit down and eat with me in comfort and in peace. And so we have these things that we take with us that help us to be made clean. They help us to be healthier and at peace. They help us to receive the goodness of this life that God gives us day after day, year after year, with that eternal promise. And so as we look at these toiletries, we remember Jesus' power to cleanse huge systems and to cleanse us. And we turn to our Lord in prayer, understanding that his love seeks to heal and cleanse us. And so we turn to Psalm 19 today. Let us pray. The heavens declare your glory, O God, and the sky proclaims your handiwork, its maker. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands that you have made, their message to the ends of this world that you have made, where you have pitched a tent in the sky for the sun. We give you praise for creation, for the wonderful intricacies, for the ways that different pieces give life to one another. And we give you thanks for the cleansing rains, for the cycle of the seasons, even for life and death, O oh Lord. We declare the glory of you, our God, and we proclaim your handiwork as creator. We know that these gifts come forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoice like a champion to run their courses. Life goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again, and nothing is hidden from its burning heat. As we see these wonders of creation, we know that your teaching, O Lord, is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of you, our Lord, is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. Your statutes, Lord, are just and rejoice the heart. They rejoice our hearts. Your commandment is clear and gives light to our eyes. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to learn your statutes, to study your word in scripture and creation, that we might understand your justice, your joy, your wisdom. Because the, the fear of you, O Lord, is clean and endures forever. Your judgments are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Lord, help us to seek your word, to desire your word and your love more than gold, more than honey. By all of these, by your word given in scripture and in our Lord Jesus and through the community of the church, by all of these are your servants enlightened and in keeping with them is great reward to us. Who can detect one's own offenses, O Lord? 
We confess to you, but we often are blinded from seeing our own ways that we offend you or neighbor. And so we pray, Lord, cleanse me, cleanse us from our secret faults. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me, O oh Lord. Then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. We pray, Lord, that you would cleanse us and that you would keep us from presumptuous sins, from presuming that we know you or the struggles of our neighbors, from presuming that we are the only ones that have knowledge, Lord. Lord, make us whole and sound and innocent. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen.